The rhomboid muscle is one of the most important muscles that stabilizes the scapula from the back. Its main function is to hold the scapula in the front and back directions. It attaches to the inner angle of the scapula and to the spinous processes of the upper thoracic vertebrae. This muscle tends to be weak. It's weak very often. And look at the direction of the fibers. The direction of its fibers goes from top to bottom. In addition, it is divided into two parts. The minor rhomboid muscle, here it is, and the major rhomboid muscle. The minor rhomboid muscle goes from the spinous process of the seventh and even the sixth cervical vertebrae to the scapula, to the corner of the scapula. And the major rhomboid muscle goes from the spinous processes of the first to the fifth thoracic vertebrae, also to the same place, to the corner of the scapula. This division is conditional simply because of the different attachment points. The major rhomboid muscle attaches to the thoracic vertebrae, while the minor attaches to the cervical vertebrae. But it often happens that when the thoracic vertebrae are displaced, only the major rhomboid muscle becomes weak in isolation. And in this case, the minor rhomboid muscle tries to compensate for its weakness, tries to hold the scapula on its own, and therefore starts to shorten and hurt. But most often, of course, the entire rhomboid muscle becomes weak at the same time. It is precisely when the rhomboid muscle is weak that slouching occurs, because it holds the scapula from behind. The antagonist of the rhomboid muscle is the pectoralis minor, and when it is weak, the scapula and the entire shoulder girdle shift forward with shortening of the pectoralis minor. And also, a person wants to straighten up in this position, but starts to do so not because the extensor muscles that fix the scapula from behind are working, but straightens up by excessively straining the back extensor in the lumbar region, and at the same time, hyperlordosis develops. And this is the position of the head and neck when the long neck extensor is deactivated. Because the long neck extensor, just like the rhomboid muscle, attaches to the upper thoracic vertebrae. And when the rhomboid muscle is weak, fixation and displacement occur. And the long neck extensor also can't work properly because of the weakness of the rhomboid muscles and the instability of these vertebrae. Here you can see the pectoralis minor muscle. It attaches to the coracoid process of the scapula right here and to the third, fourth, and fifth ribs. This is the antagonist of the rhomboid muscle. When the rhomboid muscle is weak, the pectoralis minor muscle immediately becomes shortened because it tries to compensate for the weakness of the rhomboid muscle. But this causes a lot of problems because first of all, there is a neurovascular bundle located under the pectoralis minor muscle and secondly, it is a respiratory muscle. This is how posture changes when the pectoralis minor muscle shortens. Here, because the third, fourth, and fifth ribs become fixed, there is a restriction of mobility, primarily in the third, fourth, and fifth vertebrae. And in addition, this muscle is a respiratory muscle and it's a muscle of inhalation. When it shortens, it pulls these ribs upward, and the chest stays as if it's always in an inhaled position. And the rhomboid muscle is an exhalation muscle. It contracts during exhalation, and during exhalation the scapula moves closer to the spine. And the pectoralis minor muscle is an inhalation muscle. When it contracts, it pulls the third, fourth, and fifth ribs upward. And with constant shortening of the pectoralis minor muscle, it turns out that the rib cage is acting like it's always in an inhaled state. Weakness of the rhomboid muscle most often occurs due to instability of the ribs at the point where the ribs and vertebrae are fixed. Here you can see the pectoralis minor muscle itself, and right underneath it runs the neurovascular bundle. 
which then splits into groups of nerves and blood vessels that go down the arm itself. And the first sign of shortening of the pectoralis minor muscle is numbness, which most often appears at night. Because at night, when a person, for example, throws their arm behind their head, there is even more tension in the pectoralis minor muscle and numbness occurs in the arm. Then weakness appears and even pain throughout the entire arm. Together with the rhomboid muscle, the function of holding the scapula from behind, the lower, middle, and upper trapezius muscles also have the function of holding the scapula from behind. Here they are marked with arrows. Also, the latissimus dorsi and the back extensor. But the back extensors should not be involved in constantly maintaining posture. They are only activated, for example, when bending forward and extending. And it's these muscle groups that should be responsible for maintaining posture and holding the shoulder blade back. These are the rhomboid, latissimus dorsi, and the middle and lower trapezius muscles. And very often, it's exactly these muscles that become weak. But most often, it's the rhomboid muscles, and weakness on both sides is much more common. The lower trapezius and the lower trapezius also usually has bilateral weakness. The latissimus dorsi muscles most often become weak on one side. Here you see a fragment of an exercise where the shoulder blades are brought together as much as possible, and this is the maximum contraction of the rhomboid muscles. We will use this exercise specifically to train the rhomboid muscles. Training all the back extensor muscles should start with training the rhomboid muscles because this is the muscle that will fix the shoulder blade in the correct position. If we start training the extensors with the lower or middle trapezius or with the latissimus dorsi, then if the rhomboid muscle is weak and remains weak, there will be no result. Because first of all, we need to restore the rhomboid muscle and only then all the others. Here you can see an exercise specifically for the rhomboid muscle. In this exercise, you bring your shoulder blades together as much as possible, hold for one or two seconds, and then relax. The shoulder blades move forward. Bring them together again and relax. Pay attention that in the final position, your shoulder blades should be brought together as much as possible. At the same time, you should feel tension in your back. Hold this position for one to two seconds. And note that your shoulders themselves should not rise up. The movement is only backward. Relax. Your shoulder blades move forward and then bring them together again. Do 10 repetitions like this. 10 repetitions of this movement. Then rest for 20 to 30 seconds. And repeat again. Do three sets of this exercise. The second type of this exercise is done lying down. Here the load is greater and the starting position here. Pay attention. Your forehead must touch the floor and your head should not be lifted so that the neck and back extensors are not engaged. So that the movement happens only in the shoulder blades. Yes, exactly like that. 